Mike Rooney. Today's free art lesson is going to be on how to tone your canvas before you start painting. Uh, in a lot of workshops I do, people say, oh, should I tone it or should I leave it white? Well, you know, there's, there's different ways. Uh, you know, it's nice to try them both, figure out which one works for you. I've always toned them. I just don't like the intimidation of a white canvas. It's, uh, it's too much. It's too crazy. It makes me freeze up. I get scared. But if I can just put a little bit of orange on there. Uh, now, I did do a, a little uh, introduction de uh, video that's online at jerrysartorama.com. What you do is you go over there and you look up Real Art Academy Starter Set Intro. And what it is, it'll show you how I put out all these colors on the palette in the same place every time. And uh, that's important because you want them to be in the same place so you don't have to think about where to go. You automatically know where the yellow is, where's the blue, where's the red. Then I show you how to tone a canvas with orange acrylic, which I use. I use oil paints to paint, but I use orange acrylic for these uh, backgrounds. So let's get started. Um, let's talk about it. I'll take this one off and I'll show you. Now this is just white, a white board, and I take orange hue acrylic paint and I just smear it on there. Now in the old days, I used to put, um, in the old days, you know, three, four, five years ago, I used to put magenta down. So I had magenta about the same value down instead of orange. Now you can paint on top of that also. It doesn't matter. And uh, you'll get a different effect, okay? And if you'll go over to my free art lesson that I did on painting different colors underneath of your shapes, underneath of your top coat, uh, you'll see uh, this demonstrated in the free art lesson. And I showed how putting pink under one makes this block look different than if you paint yellow underneath of it. If you paint yellow, you're going to get a warmer block. If you paint green under it, you're going to get a greener block. And uh, this one had some purple under it. So you can see that these three look decidedly different. So it, that just proves the point that whatever's underneath this blue paint, all this paint was blue, but whatever's under the blue paint first is going to influence what goes on top of it. So that same thing goes for here. So if I paint uh, magenta, let's say I put some magenta out and I do a painting on top of that, it's going to be different than it is if I have orange underneath of it. Now there, you can go and you can scrub different colors of underpainting on it too. There's, that's another way. Not have the whole canvas as one tone or one color, but have different colors. I know some people do this. They paint, they paint some magenta down here maybe. And maybe a splotch over here. And they let this be orange and maybe they come over here and they make this uh, red, a little bit redder, like that. Now notice how thin it is. When you underpaint, you want to keep the paint thin so that this paint doesn't mix too much with the other one. So then you could go in there and you can make orange, let's say, make a different color yellowy orange over here. Now that's really thick. I would have to blot that off because that's super thick. That would get in the way, but you get the idea. Now this side could be even a little more red and a little more red up there. Now look how crazy, I mean it looks like an abstract painting. But that would really be fun to paint on top of because then you could draw out all your shapes and you could begin your painting um, just like you would any other. And if you, if you want to do this technique and not do it in acrylic, I suggest doing it in acrylic because then it just dries. You can just put the paper towel on there like this and just blot it. And that blotting gets rid of all the oil. The oil soaks up into the fibers of the paper towel and you basically get a little, little mono print. So you do that a couple times and you'll be dry enough to paint on top of. So let's see what happens if you paint colors over top of these. Let's take blue and paint blue over this one. and paint blue over this one. Look what happens. One looks greener and one looks bluer. Same blue, but when you take blue and put it in magenta on this shape, you get that color. And when you take blue and put it on top of that yellowy orange, you get that color. So you can see that every time you change these 
underpaintings, you change the way the color looks. So you can use the same top coat and it's just going to change the way the block or the shape looks because of what's underneath of it, what's mixing with it. Now this one's going to look grayer because that what was under it is pretty dark and cool and gray. So see how that that looks different than that one, that one, that one. So you can see that whatever you paint underneath of the top coat is going to affect how the shape looks. So that's real good to know. It's another tool in your arsenal. We need as many tools as we can. The more we understand about color and how to apply paint, the more uh, varied we can be in our, in our paintings. We can get more effects. So I hope that helps you do some really cool shapes. And if you'd like to see some more about me or my paintings, go to mikerooneystudios.blogspot.com.